ప్రైజ్ ద లాడ్ హలో లూయా టెక్నాలజీ ఇస్ సో వండర్ఫుల్ ఇఫ్ యూ డోంట్ నో ద బటన్ యు ఆర్ ఇన్ ట్రాబుల్ ఇఫ్ యూ నో ద రైట్ బటన్ దెన్ యూ కెన్ వర్క్ అవుట్ వెల్ సో థ్యాంక్ యూ పాస్ట్ డౌన్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ సచ్ ఎ జాయ్ టు బి హియర్ ఇన్ ద సింపోజియం వేర్ ఎవ్రీబడి స్పోక్ వెల్ అండ్ ఐ వాస్ టాకింగ్ టు పాస్టర్ జాక్సన్ I said, uh, I go and stand there. I said, the one who is coming after me is a mightier. Listen to him. <laughs> Because I was asked to preach first. Then I said, if somebody speaks before me, I said, the guy who spoke before me spoke so well. The guys who are going to speak after me, they are even good. So listen to them. <laughs> and then... if i am the last person to speak then i said whatever all of them they spoke i say amen to that <laughs> and go home <laughs> anyway it's such a joy to be here in this house well pastor don thank you so much for making me the sacrificial lamb for this symposium <laughs> <laughs> so i offer myself <laughs> let's see how it goes and also being with all the family here this is a family for me as past don said uh, i am not going to preach a sermon but i am going to share what god has put on my heart uh, so i think you all don't keep your plumb lines with you to judge me <laughs> take away all the personal plumb plumb lines and keep christ there actually so that's wonderful thank you past mark and the christina for being here and also you know whenever i go to houston we enjoy the snacks <laughs> we enjoy the seaside in all that thank you so much and pastor don is my mentor so i look up to him and is such a wonderful man of god i have seen many many pastors they are good nothing wrong in them but here is a man of god along with sister mawa a wonderful couple god fearing christ centered and they have only one passion to preach christ that's it you know and uh, i always have a a na of you know what is happening here because when i was here tfi was not there and tfi was born i have seen that you know and i am a part of tfi pas don was so gracious to include me in the team and uh, i said thank you so much pastor and uh, what is happening is huge actually and let me tell you before i preach the best is yet to come Amen. the punch line <laughs> the best is yet to come see when you preach you, you preach in america you don't get you, you you get only appreciation but if you preach in other parts some of the churches whenever you release a punch line people appreciate and they come forward here and put some money here <laughs> and this mo- this afternoon when i was sharing the table am i right pastor yes. in kenya is the same thing when i was i was sharing the table this afternoon i said i was said if you say i was in liberia actually i was sharing the word and uh, you know liberia is not that rich country it was just uh, you know normal like india but when i was sharing something is touching their hearts and they were coming the people are putting the money there and while they were putting the money i was getting excited <laughs> and i said let me make another punch line <laughs> so you know if you know one man with god is a majority there's another punch line <laughs> if somebody gets that word they come here and put some money here so likewise you know we enjoyed our time pastor thank you so much and i think this symposium is not just another symposium it will create a history in the christian world let me tell you that don't say that this is a punch line this is a real line this is real because you know in this world 
nowadays, because as a pastor, as Pastor Don was sharing, we have seen so many teachings are coming into Christian world now. People are preaching towards galleries. If I make you happy, you will be happy and my pockets will be full. That's happening. If I give a prophecy, a guesswork, if it hits powerfully, that will be good for me. I mean, that is not the reality right now. There is something beyond that. Something beyond prosperity gospel. Something beyond man-centered gospel. Something beyond ministry-centric gospel. Something beyond grace-centric gospel. Something which we have to focus on Christ. I greet all of you along with my dear wife, Rani. Here is my dear, beloved wife in whom I am well pleased. <laughs> and this is our 40th year of wedding anniversary. We are not, uh, we did not marry when we were children. We married when we are old enough. Because you might be thinking, how could Pastor Mohan has have 40 years of married life? He looks so young. <laughs> you must be having that feeling. But let me clarify that. We die for Jesus. <laughs> Once you die for Jesus, you look young. That is Christ-centered gospel. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What is that gain? That gain is you look young. So that's one thing. Anyway, anyway, I think if, you, if you're happy, I'm happy. So this, morning, this evening, I just uh, want to say one thing. Before I preach, uh, my son Prince always says one thing. And Pastor Don knows all of my three kids very well. They love him, Sister Baba, and they love to spend time with him. And uh, they always have a great regard and respect for Pastor Don and Sister Mawa. My son is into business. He's a big time businessman, but uh, I don't expect money from him. So it settles everything, like, you know. And... Uh, he says that if at all I have to come to U.S. and spend some time at somebody's feet. You know, in the olden days, there was no universities. It's a one-man university. One man. Gamaliel is a one-man university. So he said, I would love to sit at the feet of Pastor Don to learn from him. Because he's not only a preacher... He is a practitioner. He practices what he preaches. So this house is blessed by this wonderful man of God. And TFI is blessed by this wonderful couple. And uh, when Pastor Adolf was, uh, Bishop Adolf was sharing that, you know, he was uh, 20,000. I said the revival in Africa begins from there. The key is going to be unlocked. Revelation 3.8 says, oh, my time is running out, Pastor. This whole introduction, you, will you count this in that? I mean, I mean, okay. This is introduction, actually. You know, no. let us settle this first. Let us settle this. Oh, yeah, yeah, because this is only an introduction. I'm not speaking the word, I'm speaking about you guys. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, they can change I was, telling, I was telling a story to Brother Jackson. You know, I, I told him that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Nathan, you are a wonderful man. I was sharing Pastor Jackson, Pastor Jackson one thing this afternoon. I said, you know, in England, I was preaching in a Baptist church. Baptists are known for uh, systematic, disciplined people. And the pastor friend came to me and he said, Pastor Mohan, you need to preach for 17 minutes. Then I said, what is the importance in 17 minutes in Bible? There are 12 baskets. 
12 disciples, 12 tribes. Where is the 17 minutes have come? He said, no, no, normally we allow pastors to preach for 15 minutes. Since you are my friend, I pleaded the board to give two more extra minutes. <laughs> then I said, I told him, my dear friend, if I can extend my preaching time with the consent of the congregation, is there any problem with you? I have no problem. Try that. So I just, you know, I was preaching at the end of 15th minute, I said, I started telling them a story. You know what was the story? The, they were taking the hero of the story to the cliff of the mountain. The, almost they were about to push. Then I said, oh, my time is running out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll come and share this next, next thing next year when I come back. <laughs> Our people are suspense lovers, you know. They want to know what is happening next. Then I said, if you really want to hear from me, what is happened after that, you have to give me some extra time. They said, Pastor, please take whatever you want. <laughs> then I preached the whole message. And then the pastor came and told me, you are a smart guy. You are a smart guy. Then I said, I'm not a smart guy. I'm a wise guy. I made my way into it. Anyway, it's okay. Now, today, tonight, the message, Christ the plumb line. God always speaks to us through visions. He wants us to see something so that we can accomplish that. When he spoke to Abraham, he said, Abraham, see the stars in the night. See the sand in the morning. Day in and day out, whenever you see that, I'm reminding you about my promise to you. The promise which I've given to you. See that and have hold, hold on to that. And likewise, if you see others like Moses, he's, he, he encountered him in a burning bush. What for? God wanted Moses to live a life that should burn from inside out. A burning bush experience. That's what God has shown him. And Moses lived up to that vision. And when God was speaking to Amos, he was sharing the same thing. First vision was locusts. The second vision was fire. And third vision, what are you seeing Amos? God wanted Amos to see something. He said, a plumb line. Today's message, the intent is very clear that we all need to see the plumb line. That is the intent of this message. I hope you are understanding my English, my accent. Absolutely, because I just came yesterday night and I was with Eric my dear brother Eric and Susan, because Pastor Don said, you need to host my dear friend. And they were graciously accepted that. And while coming, we, I missed out my luggage. One of the thing, one of the, my checked in baggage. So my suit was, you know, my blazer was in the, in the checked in baggage. My plan A was, that I should wear a suit while I'm preaching because I want to keep up the dignity of this house because pastor wears a suit and I want to have that. But I missed it out. Now I have plan B. <laughs> then I thought, let me have this shirt. I have another shirts, but this shirt, I thought, let me have Ethnic shirt like India. I represent India. My flag is there. I'm so proud and happy about my flag. I'm, I'm proud to be an Indian. I want the heaven should be filled with my people, Indians. 1.35 billion people. And we should dominate the heaven. That is my heart. Of course, we treat you as our cousins. You also be there. That's, uh, that's okay. And my plan B was this. And Pastor Jackson came and gave me a plan C. He gave me a nice uh, blazer, his own blazer, which is good. 
but you know what happened it is not fitting to my <laughs> he is thin i am not that thin <laughs> so it is not in the fixing here we tried little bit then i thought let me have it plan c it didn't work out for me he was gracious pastor it's up to you i kept that there let me that will be my vision for next season <laughs> whenever i take that i should take this out then i was asking god lord if you put a plumb line in front of me it will not be straight <laughs> it will go different so plumb line from the side but not from the front it affects me so the intent is very clear for god there is no plan b there is no plan c it's plan a there's only one plan for you even before the foundations of the world that he has seen you that he you should be transformed into the likeness and the image of his son jesus christ and he wants to be that plumb line he wants to be that plumb line our intent that we should become like him our content is christ our content is christ he is the center of our lives he is center of our thoughts he is center of our living he is center of our preaching that is christ the plumb line in our lives beloved and the context what is the context what is that life application for this message what is the life application for this symposium this symposium we receive the word and we apply that word into our lives if you judge me by your understanding oh that was a good word that doesn't help you anymore we don't need any appreciation we want you to listen to the word and take it to your heart and apply that into your lives that is the context beloved that is relevant to our lives when god says amos amos what did you see now what i want to tell you is you take your name mohan what did you see now what are you seeing now i say lord i see a plumb line who is the plumb line jesus christ is the plumb line and not only is the plumb line like some of our wonderful preachers they said is also the builder is a cornerstone is the cornerstone is the role model plumb line and is also the builder of our lives that is what today i want to encourage you beloved salvation is an event the moment you accept the lord jesus christ as your lord and savior you are a new creation old is gone but sanctification is a process am i right is a process this process of changing into the likeness and image and while you are changing who is your role model who is your plumb plumb line it is jesus christ beloved he is our plumb line and his life is an exemplary you know when you look at jesus christ he is god he is one among trinity coequal coeternal and coexistent but when he came down to this earth it is a different story all together he has taken the flesh the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us full of grace and truth you know the christian world has been contaminated by the greek philosophy the greeks have made christianity as a concept for them truth is a concept grace is a concept but the hebrew the people say the bible says grace is a person and is a person you reach to the grace grace is reaching pastor don now he's making him strong amen not here in the mind it is there is coming what is truth 
Oh, some people say, not speaking, not speak lie. No, that is not the real one. The truth is Jesus Christ is real and is relational. The real meaning in Hebrew about truth is, is real, is relational. The truth is real and relational. He comes to you. He touches you. And he transforms you, beloved. That is what all about Jesus Christ. And then let me tell you a few things before I close. Oh, I have some time is there. And if I don't finish this word, this tonight, next year I will come and finish it. <laughs> yeah, let me be very honest with you this evening. And the plumb line, you have to see, beloved. And Christ, right from his childhood, when he has come to this world, he led a life that's a plumb line life for us, a role model. Let me go through a few things. How he lived, how he challenged us, how he made us to live like that. First of all, God wanted us to be like him. Now, I will give you some scriptures. You'll go and read at your house, not here. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. You know what it is? It says, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. The heart of God for us. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. We all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And that is what God wants from us, beloved. And he, is, he predestined us to be transformed. Romans 8, 29 says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his son. He, always, he already did, predestined us that he will bring us there, beloved. That is the greatest hope we have. Because he is working in us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Always be with us. Every day, the, the sanctification process always takes place in our lives. I, I know one, one, one pastor, one, one young man, when we, before he became a pastor, he told his testimony. He was a good guy. He got saved, but he was struggling with his life. Then he, uh, he, he prayed, Lord, how can I get rid of my issues, life issues, struggles? I speak lies at times. I get emotional at times. I get angry at times. How can I deal that? The Lord told him, write down everything what you do. Be honest. When he written on the page, it was full. Some Christians, their pages are full. And then he said, work on these things. One after the other. Each day, a day has come, his paper has become totally white, beloved. Absolutely white. Because that is the transformation process. The new creation has to be transformed into the likeness and image of Jesus Christ. Now let us see how he has taken up his responsibility. Jesus Christ, at the age of 12, he realized his responsibility. You know what? In the Jewish culture... If he wants to become a rabbi, you need to know the Torah, the Pentateuch. It has to. Otherwise, you are disqualified. You will be tested. If you are disqualified, you have to go for fishing. That's what happens there. And then Jesus, he put hours, hundreds and thousands of hours to, to memorize Torah. And he, he, he went into the temple because the Passover was there. They have to go into that. You know, how could he end up in temple? You know, there is another story behind that. Because in the Jewish culture, in the tradition, the women after Passover, the women go ahead of the men so that they can cook for them. It's a male chauvinistic world. They cook for them. And these guys will be moving around, 
talking to the friends and say hi to everybody they go in the evening there to eat the food so in the process they missed out jesus joseph thought jesus was with mary mary thought joseph jesus was with joseph in the confusion they missed out when they went they must have gone for a day's journey they went there and he was not there so they were searching for him for 3 days on the third day they found him in the temple talking to the teachers then he said what did he say he said don't you know that i must be about my father's business at the age of 12 whatever you do you are responsible for your actions that is the jewish culture that's what it says that's what you have to be responsible beloved even at the age of 12 he spent his time today the sunday school if all i i i really appreciate sunday school people but you take up the standards at the age of 12 he was talking to the teachers in in jerusalem they were fascinated by what he said realizing the responsibility at the age of 12 beloved that is the plumb line for our families that is the plumb line for our families teach your children the word of god you know my grandson caleb is 9 years he went to his dad and he said dad do you can i get employment he said how much you want and the deal was not settled for them and my my son said i can't pay you that much but i overheard and i quickly said i will pay you caleb i will pay you he said i am happy grandpa thank you so much i said i will give you 1000 rupees every month you should come to me every saturday morning from 9 to 10 first half hour we read the we go for the bible study second half hour we pray for our, our families then he is coming and first thing you know what he said i asked him the first day what is that you you like most in the bible you know what he said grandpa i like 10 commandments then i said i explained little bit then i said you know the fourth commandment honor your parents so that you will have all that all may go well with you and you will live long on the earth not with disease you will live with good health that is the promise of god if you really don't want to go to hospitals if you really don't want to go with the uh, you know take the uh, shelter of an insurance which insurance in america i don't know but let me tell you this is the word of god honor your parents and then you know what happened then he was talking to me oh grandpa that was good then i said once you are obedient to your parents there will be a hedge around you <coughs> then he was telling talking to me grandpa sis my sister nishka she is out of the fence <laughs> because i am obedient i am in the fence she she then i said how come she is out of the fence this morning she was disobedient to the to mama what she said what mama said she did not listen that's why she was out of the fence and then i realized that's good i have so many things now time is running out but my i was spending time with my grandkid i want to see him as a man of god i want to see that he should realize his responsibilities his call, call of god on his life to be a wonderful man of god who could change the course of the nation of india so that is what jesus the plumb line to our families beloved spend time with your kids spend time with your grandkids so that it will be a blessing to to the to the families beloved then comes i'll run through quickly then when jesus 30 years he went back to his parents he was obedient to them till 30 years he was a qualified son did all that what is required by him took baptism 
and the day the moment he came out father excited about that here is my beloved son here is the real plumb line that has come to this world now in whom i am well pleased he is the role model for each one of you and the holy spirit god has come upon him then what happened he was never went to a conference he never he was taken to some other place to preach he was led by the spirit to go into the wilderness to being tempted by the devil am i right or wrong correct me if i'm wrong right so he was led by the spirit so that that he will overcome the temptations beloved when you go through a problem in our church some women they come to me and said pastor i am going through this trouble this problem it looks impossible i am it's it's painful i tell them please pray that it will go away i said no way no way you have to go through that if you are being led by the spirit go through the pain go through the problem if you are going through the mess you will become a message beloved that's another punch line today for you <laughs> if you are if, if you are going through a mess allow the spirit of god to lead through the mess one day you will become a message to the people outside that is the heart of god and the devil tempted you know what the devil said if you are a son of god turn these stones into bread when you go through an adverse situation what is the plumb line for you the word of god jesus christ how your attitude will come your attitude come by your belief system where is your root of your belief system the word of god the word of god gives you the belief system your belief system will make your attitude up there beloved what is your attitude when you look at things when you when you face problem my god will take care of everything i have no issues on that you know jesus said to satan it is written my victory is already written it is written that pastor not pastor in the bible it's not it, I, it will not said pastor no bishop no pastor it is says my son mohan babu is always is already a victorious take your name on that put your name it is written that we are going to heaven we will be transformed into the likeness and image of our lord jesus christ not only that we will change the world for the glory of god that is written for us that is written for you that's what jesus said because the devil was trying to question the identity if you are a son of god if you are son of god every time when you go through a problem when you go through an adverse situation what is your plumb line jesus christ he is the plumb line what did he say to the devil he said you know man shall not live by bread alone every word that proceeded from the mouth of god that's it my father he made he said he made a comment that my beloved son it is settled don't discuss on the settled issues in your life don't debate on the settled issues you are settled you are the child of most high god you know what for your sake your jesus christ will change the loss beloved he will bring enactment just to change the whole process for your sake he will save the entire people who are traveling in the flight do you ever realize that we are the insurance to the flight tell tell those united airlines all those things keep every believer in the in the in the in the flight your flights will never go down that is we are there beloved 
that is god's heart for you and me so you need to know your identity how special you are to god to jesus christ to god the father and let me tell you another thing and he came out and he was ministering to the people then he received the call the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor to to heal the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives to recover and the recovery of sight to the blind and set liberty those who are oppressed and the acceptable ear of the lord why i am speaking this jesus christ is the plumb line of your ministry beloved is the plumb line of your ministry as pastor don is going to ghana what does it mean he says the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the nation of africa to see that heal the broken hearted equip the saints for the ministry 20000 pastors if they receive this christ centered message they can put fire to africa beloved it is my prayer that africa in flames for the glory of god with the christ centered message that is what your ministry should be christ centered and plumb oriented plumb line oriented ministry beloved and then i will just go to a few things i'll close it my time is running out the when she, he went to the samaritan women she was outcast and she has no life at all she was living in sin but jesus christ has seen the potential in her it's not what about you what god sees about you she was just condemned she was she doesn't want even to come there but jesus said this is the woman i'll touch her transform her she will be a blessing when the disciples came back they were thinking that you know he might have eaten food but jesus said my food is to talk to this woman touch her and transform her that is the mission of jesus christ beloved to do the will of god this night if you can make a a commitment lord my food you know this morning we had a wonderful lunch and evening also we had real good food but i ate reluctantly reluctantly i ate because it was full already the food is so good and the tummy is unable to take it i am worried about my tummy i was sitting with rita i think i was sitting with your sister we was both were there i told her you know what i am eating this food reluctant already it's full beautiful tasty food but jesus said my food is to do the will of my father i never eat my food reluctant always i am willing to do that all through my life beloved that is your plumb line don't do the ministry reluctantly with all that you know don't worry about what people say you listen what your jesus says john the apostle he was the only one <coughs> at the cross i don't have time i could have said jesus ministered to millions nobody has come his 12 disciples 70 they were offended gone 12 disciples they have seen everything they were there three even more closer but only one who heard the heartbeat of his lord jesus christ today i want to encourage you and challenge you did you ever hear the heartbeat of your lord jesus christ why john went to the cross because he heard the heartbeat what was his heartbeat says to touch and transform the lives of the people and live a life according to his word so that you can be a testimony and a witness beloved and then if you look at another angle of his life 
he was willing to go through the process the process is you know he was living with his disciples for three and a half years if you look at hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 says who in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death he was hurt because of his godly fear then i realized in the gospels it is not written anywhere that jesus cried loudly am i right or wrong he went and prayed that's it but loud cries vehement cries and tears supplications offered prayers that was the plumb line for you and me beloved did you ever cry vehement cries did you offer your supplications that is the life of jesus christ god incarnate god in flesh on the face of the earth living a life with loud cries a vehement cries and tears tears when he was praying to his father father at the garden of gethsemane when he was fighting spirit is willing but flesh is weak you know what happened to him the blood started coming out at the garden of gethsemane you know when you go to the intense pain and agony if somebody doctors are here you know better out of the i mean instead of sweat the blood drops comes out you see that in the scripture the blood drops they were coming out at the garden of gethsemane he said father if it is possible take this cup out of me he was like you and me struggling but he said if it is thy will i can take this cup can you say that in your life lord thy will be done in my life even it hurts me even it hurts me my prayer always every day i pray only one prayer very important prayer in my life lord father let thy will be done in my life even if it hurts me it doesn't matter that's my prayer that is the plumb line of jesus christ life beloved at the garden of gethsemane he was struggling father said in silence son there is no other way you are the only way you are the way you are not a way you are the way that's why it has to happen it has to happen jesus said yes lord today my challenge to you is this night uh, which plumb line you are using is it a convenient plumb line it's a compromised plumb line a plumb line which does the will of god despite of the persecution when jesus went through the persecution you know what i think i might have told this house in the past he was humiliated he was insulted he kept his peace he kept his peace what was the motive of the satan devil to do all that because he wants to disturb the peace of jesus christ your peace always the devil wants to disturb you and your peace by showing something that's all that is only once you lose your peace it's the easy ground for devil to come and touch you 400 soldiers they have they spitted on jesus christ he was bathed on the spit of the roman soldiers what else humiliation you can expect more than that he was asked to prophesy he was asked to do all that you know he was he was his hair was plucked he was beaten 39 times you know what he was making a covenant he was walking on his own blood 
when there is a blood covenant in 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 genesis chapter 15 he walked on the blood of the animals the same jesus christ christopher he is the christ who walked when abraham slept off why did abraham slept off because because of great fear has come on him it was not the sleep it was great fear that has come on him that's why he slept off here at the at the while going to golgotha he was walking on his own blood beloved that is the plumb line jesus christ has set for us the covenantal christ he never missed out anything he said i walked on my blood to make it perfect i will not leave you nor forsake you i'll see that you will be transformed into the likeness and image of jesus christ that is a promise that is the work he is doing in our lives i will never leave you nor forsake you that's why you know <clears throat> when jesus christ was resurrected the first word he was talking to his disciples what did he say what did he say peace be unto you peace be unto you because i was holding this peace despite of adverse situations despite of pain persecution i was hold i held my peace what i have i can give what i don't have i cannot give let me tell you be give a caution if you want to be prayed prayed by the men of god whom you know don't go to everybody come to pastor don he gives you that anointing prayed by a men of god not by everybody because they might give you what they have if they have their struggles that will be passed on to you if they have family problems that will be passed on to you what peter said silver and gold i do not have but what i have i will give you that is the name of jesus christ in jesus christ name you walk yeah. hallelujah so that is what the plumb line for us beloved it's a life application finally when solomon was asking god lord i am young i cannot take i cannot rule this uh, big crowd of yours whom you love your people give me a heart of understanding then jesus my god said to him i will give you knowledge understanding and wisdom three things god gave to him knowledge understanding wisdom now i'll close with this word now having said all these things now you got the knowledge you got the information you got the revelation now it is for you to either take it or leave it take it or leave it's up to you now god will never force on anyone it's your choice the greatest gift is the choice the free will god has given to us now it's application evaluation you understood what i said exactly you know that is called understanding is evaluation now application is wisdom beloved that is application now the wise man builded his house on the rock and i know everybody who is sitting you are the wisest people i have ever seen in my life so you need to build on the rock that is the that is the wisdom beloved i just want to thank you for listening to me with an indian accent you might not have understood some of you for some of you it was looking like tongues i'm speaking but i you know what i was praying Lord I make sounds you make sense hope you understood what i said may god bless you richly over to you pastor don thank you